welcome to episode 14 of Book Club. Today I am going to read Red Riding Hood, retold by Beatrix Potter and illustrated by Helen Oxenberry. Beatrix Potter was a British author who wrote many books like Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there was a village child who was so pretty, so pretty as never was seen. Her mother was fair silly about her, and her granny was sillier still. The good woman, her mother, made the child a little hood of scarlet flannel, and the scarlet set off her bonny black curls like the flame-coloured leaves around the heart of a poppy flower. Whenever she went, she wore it, and folks called her Little Red Riding Hood. One day her mother baked tea cakes. Come, said she, come put on by Little Red Hood and trot away to five grannies. They tell me that she's poorly. Take this cone and a little pat of butter. Run along quick with the basket and bring me back word how she does. Red Riding Hood set off obediently with the basket. Her grandmother dwelt in another village. The path led over hill and dale through golden meadow sunshine and under the flickering leafy shadows of the birch trees. The myrtle smelled sweet in the warm sunny glades and the west wind blew softly through the wood. It brought a cheerful sound, the clink of axes and voices of woodcutters singing at the work. Sing ash, sing oak, sing charcoal smoke, sing hay the merry jean cherry, lay beech and bark for the wood wood screen, blue smoke and hazel and copse wood green, sing hay for the woodland merry. Another voice far amongst the trees took up the song. Here's ash and oak for the broad axe stroke, hey down come the red jean cherry. The cheerful voices died away in the distance. But no one saw Little Red Riding Hood. By the wooden swing gate at the end of the wood, hard upon the open meadow, sat a great grey wolf. He rested his chin upon the bars of the gate and he listened to the woodcutters. He was afraid of them. He durst not go home to his bed in the thicket. Neither durst he jump upon Red Riding Hood when she laid her hand on the swing gate. He had eaten nothing for three days and his mouth watered when he looked at her. But the woodcutter's jolly voices rang down the wind, and the slow, long crash of the falling tree. Child, where are you going? said the gaunt grey wolf. Now Red Riding Hood do not know that it is dangerous to talk to wolves. Sir, said she quite simply, I am going to my granny's. This is a tea cake that my mother has made, and this is a little pat of butter. She lifted the white cloth that was spread over the basket. Does she live far off? asked the wolf. Oh yes indeed, said the little red riding hood. Right across the big meadow and beyond the mill. It is the last house in the village. Hey ho, said the wolf, stretching himself. I may... As well go to and see her. I have nothing else to do. I'll go by the cart road along the side of the wood. 
and you shall follow the footpath over the little bridge. Let us try which road is shortest. The wolf went up the cart road, lippity lippity slouching along. But as soon as he had turned the bend of the fence and was hidden by the trees, he laid out his legs and ran. The little girl loitered near the gate. She climbed on the railing to gather nuts. Then she wandered along the footpath over the meadow, picking wildflowers as she went. She made a posy for her grandmother. And where the footpath climbed away, beyond the plank bridge, there were little scarlet wild strawberries among the grass, as red as holly berries, as red as the hood of Little Red Riding Hood. She gathered them in a dock leaf and put them in her basket. At last she reached the high road and at last she stepped out faster. But the golden sunshine was very low and the shadows were long and slanting before she passed the mill. Nobody saw her. The wolf had run with all his might al along the shorter way. When he came in sight of the mill, he jumped over a ditch and hedge above the road and landed on the hillside. He slunk along amongst the ferns and boulders. He came down on the further end of the village behind the old woman's cottage. Through a broken wall and around the woodshed. He slipped between the cabbages and pea sticks. His wicked eyes winked at the sun as he stood in a porch under the honeysuckle. He knocked at the door, tap, 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 very softly with his, the pad of his foot. Who's there? It's your little red riding hood, Granny, said the wolf in a mincing voice. I brought you a tea cake and a little pat of butter. The poor old grandmother, who lay ill in bed, called out, Pull the bobbin and the latch will go up. The wolf pulled, the door opened, he crept in. And then he made a great spring over the foot of the bed. The wolf was very hungry. He had no food for three days. In a little less than no time, there was nothing left at all of Red Riding Hood's grandmother. When the wolf had finished, he still felt a little hungry. He shut the door, put on the poor old woman's nightcap and bed jacket, and he got into bed. He hid under the blankets, pulling the quilt up to his eyes, and he waited for Red Riding Hood. After a while, someone tapped at the door. Rap, tap, tap. Who was there? said the wolf from the bed. Red Riding Hood was surprised to hear such a gruff, deep voice. But she thought that her grandmother must be hoarse with a cold, so she answered, It is a, it is I, Granny, Little Red Riding Hood. My mother has sent you a tea cake and a little pat of butter. The wolf made his voice as small as he could and said, Pull the bobbin, the latch will go up. Red Riding Hood pulled and the door opened. The wolf crouched down under the big clothes. Said he in his hoarse, deep voice, Put the tea cake and the butter on the dresser. Take off your shoes and sit beside me on the bed. Little Red Riding Hood took off her little muddy shoes. She scrambled up onto the bed to kiss her granny. But she was very much surprised when the thing that she thought was her grandmother pushed back the quilt and blanket and sat up. What big 
big, strong, hairy arms. And you have got Granny, the little red riding hood. Does better to hug you, my dear. What big hairy ears under your nightcap? The better to hear you, little granddaughter. But Granny, your eyes have turned yellow. The better to see you, my pretty. But Granny, Granny, what big white teeth? And that was the end of Little Red Riding. to my channel is called Candy Corn Book Club. If you like my videos, click like, subscribe and ring the bell. Look out for more videos. See you next time. Bye.